How can you possibly do that by hand? This will this will wow you. Yeah. So there's 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 a whole there's a whole category of aspects to the, the discussion around ancient technology, right? There's, and I have to be kind of careful about what you say. Oh, it is or it isn't, because in reality, we really haven't analysed that many artifacts. This vase work that we've done, first one we've actually taken a look at that that core. That's the first one and the only one that's really been analysed. So I, I, I characterise uh, something that's beyond the capabilities of these primitive ancient civilizations as being, okay, machining marks, tool marks, like these giant circular saws, tube drills, precision, and there's elements to precision, and one of those is symmetry. And there's been some interesting studies done on the faces of giant statues. One in particular is the face of uh, Ramses. There's a, a statue at Luxor. They've since put their head back up. It's up now 30 feet in the air on top of the statue, but it used to be on the ground. And again, Chris Dunn was real seminal in this. He went and took a photo, like bang on, like very front on. And then what he did was you, you take a copy of that photo, you make it 50% transparent, make the original 50% transparent, you take one and you flip it like on that horizontal axis, then you overlay them, right? So you, you would see any, like the left to right, it's like overlaying the left side on the right side. And it's perfect. Um, yeah, this it's this face here, but I wonder if you can find the picture of Chris Dunn. That's actually my there's your my video, video right there. Videos there as well, <laughs> where I get into it. Say, but it, that's not that picture you're asking for. No, it's similar, but there's it it shows other aspects of well the same radius of tool being used to cut. But what's interesting about the symmetry? It's perfectly symmetrical, left to right. Now, wow. this isn't this isn't a feature in humans. No human is perfectly symmetrical. Different nostrils, different eyeballs. It's also not something that is done in artwork so you know people often say well michelangelo you know he carved david it's a beautiful statue i've seen it's incredible but it's 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 human it's not symmetrical symmetrical is you can't again you can't achieve that degree of symmetry just by eyeballing it and doing it by hand and it's also something that's not really human i think some of these statues almost look a bit inhuman because of that symmetry when they're when they're up there and they're staring at you because it's it's mind-blowing to actually go and look at them but uh, yeah, it's 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 the other aspect is it the most efficient way to create that would be to say, well, I'm, if you were going to design it in a computer, it's like, well, I'm going to create half this face in a program and make map it out, and then I'm just going to reverse it and say, well, that's the other half. It's literally the most efficient way to do it, and that's kind of what we're seeing in some of these statues. It's, Go back to that image, please. It's virtual perfection. And it how is. did what what what's the explanation for this that modern archaeologists use? They did it by hand, right? They That's do it they by claim. hand. That's literally what they say. You just don't... It, they're not engineers and construction experts at the end of the day. That's the problem is... So it's very difficult to engage them on those specific details. And I've taken many engineers, master stonemasons, stone carvers, construction guys, and they almost... they A lot of them see it immediately. People that understand what it takes to both work in this material and to work at the scale that some of this stuff is worked in they see it immediately and they just dismiss the idea that this was done with literally pounding stones and, you know, copper chisels. It's a funny thing. They insist those things are how they were, they were done, but not once, no one ever has, has cut a single big slab of granite the size of a refrigerator in half. We've never gone that far. No one's demonstrated that, yep, you can take a copper bar and sand and grind your way through a refrigerator-sized block. And you're saying copper because we think that they didn't have steel back then. They didn't. Well, they, yeah, they mean, they, they, they didn't, and not until later. There's no evidence for it. There's evidence for copper and there's, bronze. There's no evidence for it when we're talking about 2,500 right. BC. Exactly. Now, if there was some sort of very sophisticated civilization that yep. was tens of thousands of years before that, yep. and they were wiped out... And right. then you're leaving behind these artifacts and then people are claiming them as their own and then trying to copy them. That, imitation was a huge part of it and we even see that. There's, you go to the Egyptian Museum and there is, there's these beautiful igneous stone vases made of, made of uh, granite. And right next to them, in the same display because they're found in the same place, there's a rough pottery vase that's not even turned, just put together by hand, and they've painted it with dots to make it look like granite, and it's shaped the same way as the granite vase. That's like oh, that's pure wow. imitation. Like this here. <laughs> I love this. This is one of my favorite examples. And this is like either First Dynasty or Pre-Dynastic. But, yeah, you have a hard igneous stone vessel made with perfection, and right next to what's clearly an imitation of it made from pottery, and they've even dotted it up to make it look like granite. All the most sophisticated artifacts, pyramids, everything, are all the oldest. It gets mm -hmm. worse as it goes on. And that's, that 
doesn't yeah. that's not supposed to make sense. And like I when last time I was on with you, Joe, I was trying to articulate a point, which was that there was, uh, you know, a, a, a middle kingdom. There was the first kingdom. There was the and and there was these periods of revolt and revolution and missing yeah. history within Egypt. And there's three different kingdoms. And one of which was 126 years of lost history. Another was over 200 years. And the one point to mention about that is that that means that whoever took over and reestablished themselves, there's now no one alive at that period of time that was around prior to whatever it is that reset them, that that government or whatever they were. Yeah. So if there's 126 years of lost history, no one is now alive to say what was what before that year one of 126 years, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's 3,000 years. Like, the dynastic Egyptian civilization itself is 3,000 years old. Now, they they do trace that back 30-plus thousand years. They describe a time that Zeptepi, when the gods walked the earth. They literally talk about these uh, magical abilities that you could interpret as technology. And then the, after that, there was the Shemsu Hor, the followers of Horus, these semi-divine mystical beings. And they, they have a list of kings and rulers that go back into that time. It's it's only in our interpretation and our archaeologists that really say, well, you know what, that's just myth and legend. And after that, you know, we start D- Dynasty One, King One. That's that's actually history. That they- but, but what is their justification? Like, why do they say that it's just myth and legend? Like, where are they getting this information from? Well, well why are they making these? Well, because civilization can't exist until 6,000 years ago. It says it right here, Joe. Memorize it. <laughs> but once they see Gobekli Tepe, don't yeah. they kind of have to re... <laughs> they should have formulate. They refuse. They're like, they're, go, they say they're primitive. They say Gobekli Tepe was created by... They changed it, and it literally happened. I saw this argument being made when Michael Chan was here with, Joe, with, uh, with Graham and Randall. They say it's made by hunter-gatherers. They literally changed the definition of what it means to be a hunter-gatherer <laughs> rather than move that, that precious date of civilization starting from 6,000 years ago to, you know, 10,000 years ago with Gobekli Tepe. And yeah. I... I think it's ridiculous. Go Beckley Tepper. You, you cannot produce that type of 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 a of a, instru- of a installation without civilization, right? You just so many things. The specialization of allowing someone to be able to carve, you know, eighteen foot pillars that weigh several tons. Not with just that, but relief. the fact that these animals on those pillars are three D. Yeah, you carve out, out the stone to remove stone. So that you have these giant pillars with like a lizard crawling up the side of it, but yeah. the lizard extends out from the stone. Yeah, high it's relief. Not, yeah, it's not carved into it. I mean, that's just insane. Yeah, and as you, difficult as possible. And you need, yeah. you know, you need a population base to support this sort of the development of specialization like that. It's as if, to me, it's as if they just think, well, no, these hunter gatherers, these dudes just want to get around the weekends, get away from the women, go and do some rock, <laughs> you know, little little carving project on the weekend. We'll move some stones over here. And it's not just stone circles, there's buildings and cisterns and quarries.